ان الحمد لله ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمدا عبد الله تعالى ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى اله واصحابه ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وقال تعالى في كتابه العزيز بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وَاعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا وَاذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ وَكُنْتُمْ عَلَى شَفَا حُفْرَةٍ مِنَ النَّارِ فَأَنْقَذَكُمْ مِنْهَا كَذَلِكَ يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ آيَاتِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَهْتَدُونَ وَلْتَكُنْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ تَفَرَّقُوا وَاخْتَلَفُوا مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَهُمُ الْبَيِّنَاتُ وَأُولَئِكَ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ صدق الله العظيم All praise and thanks be to Almighty Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the creator sustainer nourisher and protector May the choicest of his blessings and salutations be upon our beloved master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his family members his companions and all those who tread upon his path with utmost sincerity until the day of qiyamah My dear respected elders and brothers in Islam first and foremost I enjoin upon myself and all of you all seated here to adopt a life of taqwa for it is only through the life of taqwa can an individual can a slave of Allah attain success in this world and the hereafter Secondly it is important it is incumbent upon all of us to thank almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the numerous bounties that he has bestowed upon us for the numerous favors that he has conferred upon us for if a slave of Allah were to try to count the blessings of Allah that Allah the almighty has blessed him with he would fail miserably he would fail miserably to count all of them in total as Allah the almighty our beloved maker he himself says wa in ta'uddu ni'mat Allah la tuhsuha if you were to ever try to enumerate to count the blessings the virtues of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has bestowed upon you you would fail to count them or number them in total Allahu akbar because the favors of Allah if we were to take a look around us every single thing that is around us within ourselves within our bodies are a favor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whether they be positive or negative 
And when we say negative, what we mean is even the sicknesses around us, even the trials, the calamities, the afflictions that Allah the Almighty puts us through, even those are blessings in disguise. But we being futile, we being weak, we find it difficult to perceive the blessing in those calamities. Allahu Akbar. So likewise, my dear respected elders and brothers in Islam, it is upon us to thank Allah the Almighty for this blessed day that He has blessed us with. Allahu Akbar. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said on the authority of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, خَيْرُ يَوْمٍ فَلَعَتْ عَلَيْهِ الشَّمْسُ يَوْمُ الْجُمْعَةِ That the best of days, the best of days upon which the sun has risen is the day of Jumu'ah, Friday. فِيهِ خُلِقَ آدَمْ on that very day, was our, our father was created on this very day, on Friday. And on this very day, he was admitted entry into paradise, into Jannah. And it was on this very day, on Friday, he was taken out of Jannah and sent to the face of this earth. وَلَا تَقُومُ السَّاعَ إِلَّا فِي يَوْمِ الْجُمْعَةِ أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام حديث المسلم Likewise, the day of judgment, the day of Qiyamah will not overtake us except that it happens, it occurs on a Friday. This is the virtue attached to this day, my dear respected elders and brothers in Islam. It is a day where we need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just as we read the blessings and the virtues, there is also a scary fact that the day of judgment will also occur on a Friday. So the question that we need to ask ourselves, you and I, are we ready to meet our Maker? Are we ready to meet Allah the Almighty? If the day of judgment were, were to overtake us today, are we ready to turn to Allah the Almighty? Are we ready to face Him? This is a question that we need to keep asking ourselves. So my dear respected elders and brothers in Islam, today's khutbah is going to be about the ayah that I recited in the beginning. It is going to be about unity. See, you see, now unity is something that some people, the minute you mention unity, they are allergic to it. They can't accept it. It is as if, you know, some disease has immediately taken hold of them. They can't accept the word unity. The reason being, we have become so narrow-minded. We have become so narrow-minded that we can't even accept the word unity. On the other hand, the religion that we follow, the beautiful religion of Islam is extremely broad-minded. Extremely broad-minded, unlike us who have become so narrow-minded. For, if you were to take unity by itself, my dear respected elders and brothers in Islam, unity has different stages. Unity has different stages. Let us look at it at a large scale. Let's magnify it. Let's not look at it whether I'm a Shafi'i and you are a Hanafi or he is a Maliki and he is a Hanbali. Not in this, not in that context. Rather, let's look at it this way. That we are all the creatures of Allah the Almighty. We are all from the creation of Allah the Almighty. And I'm not only talking about the human race. The human race, animals, the animal kingdom. You take plants, you name it. Every single thing is from the creation of Allah the Almighty. Have we not got something in common now? Have we not got something in common? Leave all the differences outside the door. Look at it in this angle. Are we all not common? All of us are the creation of Allah the Almighty. This is a universal fact that we have to accept. And that is the very reason. That why when we even look at an animal suffering, whether it be a cow, a, a bull, a dog, or whatever animal it may be, the minute we see the animal suffering, our heart rends. The reason being the compassion in our heart overtakes, and we think that this is another creation of Allah the Almighty. We feel pity for that animal. The reason being we are all the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now scale down to the human race. The human race. You see, I'm talking at a level, we're not talking religion here. We're not talking religion, we're just talking in the level of, a cre of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now let's look at the human race. 
all of us are the children of one father Adam alayhi salatu was salam we are all the children of Adam the human race all of us leave the differences out once again just say for example it's an example may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbid and save us all if a disaster were to afflict our country right now Allah save us all Allah save us all if a tsunami were to come into this locality I'm just saying if it were to come and now things are being destroyed at this moment are you going to be thinking you know what I'm a Shafi'i so you know you say away oh, I'm not going to help you you are a Hanafi or you are this or you're that or the different groups you start naming one another and you start avoiding will some will a, will a human being act in that fashion when a disaster strikes humanity the, the, the trait of humanity immediately overtakes you it is the human race at last which is being affected you would run out to help the non-muslims the muslims on that very day at that very moment nothing would matter other than the sanctity of life the sanctity of life now do you see that you have something in common you have something in common to unite now scale down to the Muslim Ummah to the Muslim Ummah we my dear respected elders and brothers in Islam not looking at it at the creation level and then not at the human race level but now look at it the Muslim Ummah but it is a very sad plight that the Muslim Ummah today Allahu Akbar we have differed we are disunited we cannot unite even over a single matter we are so we are differing in so many things but in reality we are one big large family are we not we are from the children of Adam likewise we are from the family of the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are we not are we not under the flag of la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah we are all united under one flag but why can't we be united in petty petty issues we generally differ in petty issues we generally differ in petty issues we can't come to a, a conclusion unanimously the reason being like i said in that if, if a disaster were to overtake likewise if you were to see a person drowning he's drowning in the ocean and he's asking for help say a muslim is drowning and he's asking for help if a non-muslim is was on the bank or on the shore of the river would he say no you've got a beard and trample him down would he do that would he do that if he's seeking for help help i'm drowning help me would he say no no you've got a beard or you've got a turban and trample him down no rather he would jump perhaps he would even jump into the ocean to help him this is how unity affects all of us but this is a topic the minute you try to bring it up many wise people start to say you know it's something you can't it's impossible it is something good for the coffee shops where you can decide and talk about things but you can never bring it about it's never going to become a reality why because that person is a deviant that person is a kafir and he respected elders and brothers in Islam who are we who are we to determine the state of the faith of a person of an individual who are we are we God we try to do this we try to become Allah Allah save us all how do we know what is in the heart of a person of an individual even when you look at non-muslims non-muslims each and every non-muslim has the potential someday someday to become a muslim someday the greatest sinner on the face of this earth someday he has the potential to become a saint to become a wali to become a friend from the friends of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so who are we to criticize who are we to put that person down even at his deathbed are we are we people who are at the the deathbed of each and every individual each and every human being he can be a kafir he can be the worst sinner but at his deathbed if he were to utter the kalima if he were to seek forgiveness from Allah the Almighty Allah who is the most forgiving the most merciful the most beneficent if he were to forgive him he would go flying into Jannah whilst you and I who are bickering about his death bickering about his sins bickering about his transgression we are adding excess baggage to our sin load 
Rather we keep quiet and worry about our own selves. Prepare for our own death. Prepare to meet our beloved maker. This is what we should give priority to. Not bicker and talk about other people and backbite and slander about people. See at times you take a family for example. You take a Muslim family, I'm just saying, this is another example. There may be two or three brothers in that family. There may be two or three brothers in that family. Perhaps one brother goes according to the moon sighting. Okay. And he determines his Eid through moon sighting. The other brother, blood brother, he goes according to calculations. And he determines his Eid day on calculations. Okay. So there is a difference of opinion here. And like I said in the beginning, each and every human being, we are in the billions, the Muslims. Say 1.6, 1.7 billion Muslims. Each human being has his own opinion. You have a round table meeting, each person in that table would give his own opinion. He would have different opinions. No, no opinion is going to be the same. One would say red, other one would say black. One would say white, other one would say blue. This is how it works. So in one family, if two brothers were to have two different opinions, and perhaps even celebrate Eid on two different days. But yet cannot, can they not be united as brothers under one roof? Under one roof, can they not be brothers? Look at the beautiful example. There is a beautiful hadith that I want to share with you as we go on. But let me mention an anecdote, an incident which took place during the time of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And please remember salawat whenever I mention the beautiful name of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You see, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who were his best friends? Abu Bakr radiallahu an and Umar radiallahu an. Best friends. Huh? Best friends. And the greatest of Sahaba, Ridwanullah ta'ala alayhi majma'in. Abu Bakr radiallahu an and Umar radiallahu an. But when you go through the books of history, the life of our Sahaba and the life of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, many a time, Many a time the difference of opinion between Abu Bakr radiallahu an and Umar radiallahu an was so great. Abu Bakr radiallahu an would say one thing and Umar radiallahu an would say the exact opposite. But you see the beauty of the difference of opinion between them, they were so united. Nothing, nothing could separate them. This was the brotherhood between them. My dear respected elders and brothers in Islam, they are not arguing and fighting about shall we paint the masjid red or shall we paint the masjid blue. They are not arguing whether shall we air yeah, condition the masjid or shall we put fans in the masjid. No, much greater issues. Look at this incident and I hope it inspires all of us here. This was right after the battle of Badr. This was right after the battle of Badr. Now the Muslims were victorious and there were captives. POWs, prisoners of war. Rasulullah was now wondering as what to do with these captives. So he calls, he takes the counsel of his best friend, he calls Abu Bakr radiallahu anh. Ya Abu Bakr, what do, you, anh, what do you think we shall do with these prisoners? Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, now his mashura, his counsel, his advice, his opinion was, Ya Rasulullah, Islam is fresh. Islam is something new. So I think the best thing that we could do is, how about we ransom these captives back to their relatives in Mecca, because after all, they are our relatives too. They are our relatives too. So let us ransom them back to their relatives in Mecca for a good price. And then what we could do is we could take that money, we could take that money and build Islam, strengthen Islam, strengthen the Muslim army to fight other, 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 other cities and countries. We need this army to be strong for Islam to spread. So Rasulullah listened to Abu Bakr an's advice. And then he asked, Ya Umar an, what is your opinion? Now we know, we all know about Umar radiallahu anhu, what a great sahabi. His reply was, Ya Rasulullah, my mashura, my advice is, let the cousin of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu be handed over to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Let the cousin of Ali radiallahu anhu, the relative of Ali radiallahu anhu, be handed over to Ali radiallahu anhu. Let my cousin, let my relatives be handed over to me. And let Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu slaughter his cousin with his own hands. Let Ali radiallahu anhu 
slaughter his relatives with his own hands and let me slaughter my relatives with my own hands. Allahu Akbar. This was his mashura. And then he goes on to say, Ya Rasulullah, and let this act be known to the world. Let the world come to know of this. Let the people, the Arabs in Makkah come to know of this. And likewise, let Allah the Almighty witness that we do not keep anything between us and Allah. This is my mashura. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, now, before we go on, just take a minute or take a second to analyze these two opinions. These two opinions. One towards Paul Pity and the other one towards God. You see? Two different opinions. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he takes the opinion of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. He takes the opinion of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. But we don't see in the incident that Umar radiallahu anhu was hurt, was upset, that my opinion was not accepted. Now today what do we have? We have a meeting and then you say you say something and someone else says the other thing. If your mashura is not accepted, you don't ever go to that foundation, that institute ever again. Why? Because they disregard me. They don't take my opinion seriously. Or they don't take me seriously for that matter. But look at the beauty between Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu and Umar radiallahu anhu. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam acts upon the opinion of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Now the next day, Umar radiallahu anhu, as usual, his habit, he used to visit Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he is headed now to visit Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he comes to the, the majlis or where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is seated, he sees Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu weeping, they crying. He immediately asked, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, what has made you all cry? Please tell me too so that I can cry with you all. So I also can sit down here and cry with you all. Allahu Akbar. Look at the friendship. Look at the unity. Look at the brotherhood. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then clarifies, Ya Umar radiallahu anhu. Allah the Almighty has accepted your opinion. We were wrong. We were wrong. Allah has accepted your opinion and Allah has sent down the Quran in confirmation to them. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Now, do you think Umar radiallahu anhu said, see I told you, I told you you should have followed me in the first place. Umar radiallahu anhu did not reply as such. Rather Umar radiallahu anhu started weeping. Allahu Akbar. This is the caliber of the Sahaba. The Sahaba. Ridwanullah ta'ala alim ajma'in that we are supposed to follow, that we are supposed to take as role model. He started weeping and he sits down in that gathering, Allah Akbar. He was weeping that Allah the Almighty has accepted his opinion. This is the beauty in regard to the difference of opinion, my dear respected elders and brothers in Islam. And like I said in the beginning, we Muslims, we are one big family. We are one big family. Look at the hadith of Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiyallahu anhu. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said, Al-mu'minu lil-mu'mini kal-bunyani al-marthus. A believer to another believer, he, he and the other believer are like a building, are like a plastered building. Yashuddu ba'duhu ba'da. وَشَبَّكَ بَيْنَ عَصَابِعِهِ Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to illustrate he joined his fingers in such a manner just as how you would place bricks in a wall just as how each brick supports another brick this is how a mu'min is to another mu'min a believer should be to another believer he should support him he should help him he should strengthen him and this is the power of unity my dear respected elders and brothers in Islam hadith goes on مَثَلُ الْمُؤْمِنِ فِي تَوَادِّهِمْ وَتَرَاحُمِهِمْ وَتَعَاسُفِهِمْ كَمَثَلِ الْجَسَدِ الْوَاحِدِ that the example of a mu'min in his love in his brotherhood in his compassion, in his unity with other believers, كمثل الجسد الواحد It is like one body. It is like one complete body. إذا اشتكى منه عضو تداعى له سائر الجسد بالحمى والسهر In that body, if one organ, if one limb were to get hurt, say for example your finger gets cut, 
your whole body rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam say sada'a lahu sa'iru al-jasad the whole body rushes the whole body aches in return the whole body goes through fever the whole body the person by himself he suffers insomnia he finds it difficult to sleep because of the pain of one little finger for example if your finger were to get cut my dear respected elders and brothers in islam just one tiny cut say you were chopping a vegetable and your finger got cut just a cut the healing process the whole body takes place the whole body immediately springs into action the blood flow to that particular organ it recedes because if not you would bleed to death you would bleed to death and immediately the body starts producing protein sites such as collagen and other proteins to help with the healing process you know once you get a wound you get a rough texture called a scab a scab grows over your skin before that brown thing falls off this scab is formed so that infection from outside does not attack your body until the skin inside heals itself automatically and beautifully with the help of allah the whole body springs into action so likewise the muslim ummah say for example one country or some part of the muslim ummah is affected that does not mean that we look at that problem and start multiplying that problem all over the place just because you get cut in your finger do you cut all other fingers do you cut all 10 fingers no rather we should take steps to heal the problem to eradicate the problem to rectify the problem just as how the body springs into action to heal that wound the muslim ummah and my dear respected elders and brothers in islam the blessing of allah the almighty that he has given us so much of freedom in this country but we know we are living in a time filled with trials and calamities we need to be careful every action of ours say we are driving on the road the road is a place where your courtesy is very important everybody is traveling from point a to point b everybody wants to get there on time everybody wants to rush but that doesn't mean we become a road hog we start you know road rage we start pelting our emotions all over the place scolding people this is not how we show our akhlaq this is not how we will bring people towards islam rather we will start making them have a hatred and grudge towards the muslims and if you were responsible for that my dear respected elders and brothers in islam it is a great sin indeed it is a great sin so likewise in our dealing in every single aspect we need to act in such a manner that people are impressed and come towards islam how did islam spread in the beginning it was through the akhlaq of the sahaba radhiyallahu ta'ala alayhim ajma'in they were traders wherever they went they showed the beauty of islam they did not fool people they did not cheat people they did not put people into messes and soups rather they helped people come up Today we have the problem of ego that is the biggest disease ego every one of us we want our opinion to be accepted we want to be the person who is in the forefront this is the problem everybody all of us including myself we have this ego problem ego and then jealousy jealousy my dear respected elders and brothers in islam is a disease that is affecting all of us we need to seek allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure us from that disease for that disease rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is reported to have said iyakum wal hasad fa innahu ya'kul al hasanat kama ta'kul an nar al hatab beware of jealousy for jealousy is something that will eat away at your good deeds just as how a fire would gobble up a dry log a dry log so if you were to put a dry log on fire in the middle of this masjid allah save us all we would be suffocated by the smoke and that log would catch fire in no in no time at all and it would destroy every single thing around it this is the example rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam gives us we are jealous we don't we have professional jealousy we say we are in the trade we have mastered the trade we have become a, a big businessman in a particular trade now we want to monopolize that trade just you say another brother he is starting up the very same business in a small manner now you are big you have got connections you call around and block him and kill his business 
This is not how the Muslims behave. We are supposed to leave behind a legacy that people will remind, remember good about us. We need to help others come up in life. We need to bring about legends. We need to help one another. This is how we work. You take any profession, any profession. Just as how you have become a master now. You have become an expert. You need to train someone else to take up that place after you. You don't monopolize it. This is jealousy. The minute you see someone coming up, you're jealous. You see someone running in a good motor vehicle, you're jealous. You see a person who has got a good house, we are jealous. Allah save us all. Allah save us all. We try to cook up rumors that, you know, perhaps he earned this money in a haram income. How do we know that? Rather, we pray for that person. We say, MashaAllah. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. It is through Allah's help. And perhaps that person struggled hard. He strived hard and this is how he got all of this wealth. Look at the way he gives charity. Look at this and look at that. And likewise, if I want to become an individual like that, I need to strive myself. Not sit around here and there talking bad about that person. This is the other disease that is affecting the ummah. All spiritual diseases connected to the heart. The heart needs to be pure, my dear respected elders and brothers in Islam. For the heart is the seat of taqwa. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a narration his recorder has said, he pointed to his chest, a taqwa ha huna wa ashar ila sadrihi thalathan, a taqwa ha huna, a taqwa ha huna, a taqwa ha huna. Your taqwa is over here, your taqwa is over here, your taqwa is over here. Fa innaha min taqwa al quloob. Remember it's very easy for you to look at a person, oh he's got a huge beard, his beard covers his whole chest. And to say that, mashallah, this man is a muttaqi. My dear respected elders and brothers in Islam, appearances are very easy. The external, you know, the way we dress and all of this is something very easy. Many a time you see a person is in the first row of the masjid, but the sins that he is involved in, Allah save us all. He abuses his wife. He suffocates her in silence. She has no one to go to. He is addicted to pornography. So many diseases with him. The exterior is simple, but the interior is that thing that we all need to work. Our personality, our attitude, our akhlaq, our taqwa, that wherever we be, no one can see us. We are in a room, all alone. Now do we fear Allah the Almighty. Allah the Almighty who has given sight to over a billion human beings. Is that Allah? Is our beloved Allah blind? <laughs> can He not see? We think that He can't see. Allah save us all. We try to hide our sins away from the people, but we forget that our Maker is watching us. We are not, we are not ashamed to do all of this in front of Allah. The heart is something that needs to be pure, my dear respected elders and brothers in Islam. And for a person to get taqwa, taqwa and personal khuluq, akhlaq go hand in hand. For when a person's heart is pure, unity comes about easily. And remember, my dear respected elders and brothers in Islam, after, after, the power of Allah, next is the power of unity. For what an ummah can do together, the power of unity is so powerful, so powerful, that you can achieve, that this ummah can move in leaps and bounds if we are united. If all of us are united, we can eradicate any problem. Look at the enemies of Islam, the signs of the day of Qiyamah that they will gather from the east and the west. They will gather from the east and the west, just as how they gather for a meal, and they will start planning Hatching plots against the Muslim Ummah. But sadly, you know what? The enemies of Islam don't, do not have to do anything. They can just sit back and relax. Because we are fighting amongst ourselves. We are fighting amongst ourselves. They can just sit back and look at the drama. We are not united to fight back. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fill our hearts with unity. And just as we gather for prayer in the sufuf, in the masjid, just as how we are united in salah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite our hearts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fill our hearts with brotherhood. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fill our hearts with love for one another. Let not the petty differences, petty issues divide us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite us as one ummah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all from the evil that is surrounding us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our country. Keep us safe in this country. And honor the Muslims in this country. Protect the Muslims in this country. Protect the wealth of the Muslims in the country. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect the masajid of the Muslims of this country. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of our deeds and accept, uh, forgive all of our sins and accept all of our good deeds. And may Allah the Almighty unite us in.